Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. I think it is worth taking some time to discuss what we know about primates and see how that supports or refutes the probability, feasibility, and possibility of an unverified primate in North America and other parts of the world. Primate means first or primary rank. Today, it is the order that includes everything from Loris to you and I. The first member of the lineage we know of is around 75 million years old, from the late Cretaceous. Primates then looked more like a squirrel than what we would associate as a monkey today. But the mass extinction event some 65 million years ago made the environment unsuitable for the vast majority of what we now call dinosaurs, but not so for small mammals. It wasn't until 55 million years ago that primates like this, Smilodectus, began to resemble what we think of now as primates. During the Miocene and Oligocene, between 10 and 33 million years ago, primates flourished and diversified in the grasslands and forests of Eurasia. And though most of today's primates dwell in tropical forests, that is by no means a requirement of the primate order. Chinese snub-nosed monkey and Japanese macaque are creatures of the temperate forest, where temperatures routinely fall below zero. These cold-weather primates eat lichen, as well as the inner bark of certain trees. And it is no coincidence that lichen is nowhere more plentiful than in the Pacific Northwest. The skeptic must concede that lichen may provide sufficient calories for such a creature, as the supply is limitless. Though the skeptic would likely retort that lichen and bark does not satisfy the nutrition required to sustain a large primate through the North American winter. But this assumption ignores that North American ape sightings tend to be centralized around wetlands, be it coastal, marsh, lake, or river. And the protein doesn't really go anywhere. If a creature is clever and strong enough, food resources could certainly be coaxed out of even frozen wetlands. Animals like otter subsist year-round, and a large primate would have no trouble utilizing frozen environments, it being larger and more formidable than the known primates. Also, it is certainly a reasonable assumption that such a creature may have some food storage system, or stash, to last the winter. The potential ability to gather, and perhaps even minimalistically, store food, and utilize inexhaustible expanses of aquatic wetlands, supplemented with unlimited lichen, certainly is more than sufficient to satisfy the high nutritional demand that such a creature requires, through even bitter winter. In fact, the largest verified primate, mountain gorilla, have been tracked between 13 and 14,000 feet up the Virunga Mountains, which receives regular snowfall. It is plausible that populations linger at even higher elevations. Speaking of gorilla, while the majority of primates today are arboreal, meaning they spend their time in trees, the largest does not. Adult mountain gorilla rarely climb trees, and they clearly haven't for quite some time, as their feet reflect ground-dwelling behavior. Their feet are broad and flat. And though this large primate has been terrestrial for some time, its great toe still diverges from the others. Imagine a creature that has been out of the trees for some 15 million years longer than gorilla, and you're already halfway to Sasquatch. So in today's largest known primate, we have the beginnings of a large flat foot, consistent with feet that are dedicated to upright locomotion. This is a foot designed for absorbing impact and bearing and distributing weight. Many primates developed upright walking, each with subtle distinctions, like this Australopithecus and Paranthropus. Though bipedalism is not as unique or groundbreaking a concept as early anthropology once depicted, even extinct apes, like this Oreopithecus, developed a mechanism for upright locomotion, entirely separate and entirely unique to hominin locomotion. And I doubt that Oreopithecus was the only one. Though as a note, as of 8 million years ago, remains do not indicate that Oreopithecus was a true biped, but rather spent a great deal of time on two legs. It was getting there. Circumstantial support for a bipedal primate in America's temperate northwest is certainly not enough to validate the existence of such a creature. That being said, couple a plausible circumstance with a rich history of reported primate behavior in the region, and the case becomes stronger. 
Primates are intelligent and therefore possess a unique behavioral profile. They have a very exclusive set of behavioral traits. And of course, John A. Bindernagel has uncovered reports of rock throwing dating back to the 1840s. Mind you, this behavior was not definitively revealed or cataloged about known apes until the 1960s. Jeff Meldrum has reported having a softball-sized rock, quote, lobbed in his direction while he was evaluating a track find in the Siskiyou Mountains of Northern California. Biologist John Mainzinski was hurled into the uncouth world of Bigfoot after having pine cones thrown at his camp after he had been disturbed by a nocturnal encounter by something with a distinct oversized human-shaped hand in Wyoming. And a historical trove of rock-throwing behavior reports exist. But rock-throwing is not the only primate behavior reported in North America. Another is that of facial expressions. Primates have elaborately specialized facial muscles, developed to navigate complex social hierarchies. The facial reflex is the primate's primary form of nonverbal communication, perhaps the most iconic of which is the smile. The Shimshian tribe of British Columbia has a tradition of mask-making, a tradition of masks that certainly seem to reflect the smile of an ape. This one was made sometime in the 1830s, but are from a tradition much older. They were much more of the same style, but apparently have all been destroyed, lost, or hoarded. These native people of America should have no concept of ape, whatsoever. But here we are. This is not a mask of a human being, and it certainly couldn't be a depiction of a known primate. Short of humans, there isn't much in Canada that this can be mistaken for. The Kwakiutl tribe of the Pacific Northwest also has a tradition of such masks, featuring pursed lips. Though notice how there aren't really lips. Yet another iconic primate characteristic, that flared, almost duckbill expression. They call the creature buckwas. Totems throughout North America have long depicted a similar primate, though it bears many names. And it is important to note that Native American tradition and education was verbal. It was an oral culture. An oral culture that was fundamentally terminated. So the most thoughtful and thorough summations of today's anthropologists are rendered incomplete to the point of near useless in the effort to catalog the tribal knowledge of these creatures. Loggers in southern Idaho reported vocalizations, branch cracking, and limb tearing, pointing toward their logging operations. Both chimps and orangutan have been documented breaking and arranging branches to indicate and represent barriers, how close they're okay with you being. Gorilla and chimpanzee use intervals of ground slapping as a means of long-distance communication. It has only been documented when the subjects are in a state of agitation, which they tend to be when they're being observed. Ground slapping likely translates to the wood-knocking phenomena in North America, the difference likely being that the known apes use their hands, while the presumably more intelligent Sasquatch uses a switch to strike a desired material. Additional primate behavior reported in North America involves alleged nocturnal behavior, which chimpanzee have transitioned to in the region of the Ugandan Civil War. This was documented by a ranger named Owen Caddy with the Ugandan Wildlife Authority. The chimps have become active at night, as have proposed Sasquatch. This displays a willingness and intelligence to actively adjust a behavioral routine to reduce or evade threat and they're likely smart enough to know that in this day and age, we are the threat, and have been for quite some time. There exists a litany of consistently unique and marked primatological behaviors on record in North America, and yet there is supposedly no primate in North America. The combination of circumstantial support and a consistent, substantiating record of primate behavior and ethnography makes the case for Sasquatch more formidable but obviously nowhere near invulnerable. Notably, the lack of any substantial evidence of such a creature in the form of fossil or recent remains. To address the former, the taxonomic family of the primate order is devastatingly incomplete. An anthropologist and paleoprimatologist named Bob Martin, a curator at the Field Museum in Chicago, 
asserts that less than 5% of extinct primates have been unearthed or identified. Again, less than 5% of ancestral primates have been catalogued. And I cannot stress this enough in regard to primates. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And this is evident even with the verified primates. A literal handful of specimens document the history of chimpanzee and gorilla. The first fossil remains of chimpanzee were not unearthed until 2005, and they consisted of two incisors and one molar, in a sediment deposit from about half a million years ago. If fossil evidence is so rare, where primates were once common, it stands to reason that fossil evidence would be near non-existent where the primates are very uncommon, and relative newcomers to the region. Dr. Peter Andrews of the British Museum of Natural History writes in his book An Ape's View of Human Evolution that, quote, the apes seem to have sprung out of nowhere. I can think of another ape that people are going to say sprung out of nowhere. No one could have predicted this, they'll say. One argument against the creature's existence that I'd like to address is essentially, if these creatures are real, wouldn't we see them all the time? I've grappled with this assertion through the years, and my response is twofold. First is that apes have been documented using intelligent, cryptic behavior to evade humans, such as altering vocalization habits, as well as a transition to nocturnal foraging and travel. So a more capable primate would certainly take it much further. And second, it's not like they aren't really seen at all. This sightings database belongs to the BFRO. There are others like it. And I assert that for every sighting reported, there are 10 to 100 additional sightings that aren't reported. And even the most disciplined recorder would not assert that their data is close to complete. And as for the lack of particularly compelling film evidence, or a fresh corpse, well that part doesn't really surprise me. When a person views a Sasquatch, that person is in the Sasquatch's environment, not the other way around. Even the most savvy outdoorsman is like a fish out of water compared to a species that exists in the wilderness. Glimpses are brief, and probably calculated on the creature's part, and perhaps not without reason, as has been speculated. Most encounters end before the witness's eye even recognizes what it's seeing, much less focus a camera. Research into chimpanzee intelligence supports this rapid response and situational awareness on the creature's behalf. This footage is from the Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University. It shows that chimpanzee have an intensely stronger propensity for short-term memory than humans. The numbers flash in less than a second on specific points of the screen. Then squares appear where the numbers were, and the subjects are able to hit the squares as if they were still seeing the numbers. They have just a fraction of a second to memorize the numbers and their location. And again, less than a second to tap the squares in the correct order. This is not something they practice, they just do. The chimpanzee margin of error is negligible. While humans can rarely tap the squares correctly to the fourth number, and almost no human can exceed six correct squares, the chimps casually tap the correct sequence virtually every single time. They complete the sequence at the same speed, whether the numbers are visible or not. To me, this suggests not only an extreme advantage in short-term memory and reflex, but an overall heightened perception. It may take a human as much as 10 seconds to memorize the location of the numbers before the sequence can be replicated, while a mere chimp can do so rather nonchalantly after just a fraction of a second. I believe that chimps and other primates perceive time differently than we do. Information that my brain requires 10 seconds to process is processed by a chimp's brain in one second. So what does that mean? Roughly speaking, what I can do in a minute, a chimp can do in six seconds. What takes me a second to react to, takes a chimp one-tenth of a second. The time it takes a person to visualize, interpret, formulate a response, and act out that response, all occurs in a fraction of the time it takes chimpanzee to do the same thing. And I'm talking about a creature that is quite literally head and shoulders above the common chimpanzee. Imagine the edge this gives Bigfoot. If people literally appear to be in slow motion compared to their mental dexterity. Honestly, I'm surprised there are as many sightings as there are. Anyway, 
like, and subscribe. If you'd like to reach out to me, use the email at the end of this video, and I'll get back to you if I'm willing and able. And as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.